Grace and peace to you, and welcome to worship on this seventh Sunday of Easter. We're coming to you live from Lutheran Church of the Ascension in Savannah, Georgia. I'm Pastor Todd Cutter. With me is Pastor Sarah Cutter, and our chief musician, Cantor Tom White, is off camera. You'll notice that uh, our staff and that their families are with us. We've all continued to work together. And having them here helps us get an idea of what worship will look like when we are able to all be together again. A very special welcome is extended to Rhett Barnwell, who is providing music on harp today. At the end of the bulletin, you'll find a brief bio about Rhett and a website that you can visit to learn more about him. Also, in the comments section of of this live video, you'll find a link that will take you to a connect card. If you're visiting with us, we'd love to stay in touch with you. So you can fill that out and share information about who you are and where you're visiting from. You'll also find the bulletin for today's service on that link and also information about how to give online. Worship continues with Thanksgiving for Baptism. Please stand. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in this font, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty, and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. In Christ there is no east or west, in Him no south or north, but one community of love throughout the whole wide earth. In Christ shall true hearts everywhere their high communion find. His service is the golden cord, close binding humankind. Join hands, disciples of the faith, whatever your race may be. All children of the living God are surely kin to me. In Christ now meet both east and west, 
in him meets the help and north. Oh, Christly souls are one in him throughout the whole wide earth. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Now is the feast of the Lamb once slain, whose blood has freed and united us to be one great people of God. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy to the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. Power and riches, wisdom and might, all honor and glory to Christ forever. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. For God has come to dwell with us, to make us people of God, to make all things new. Now the feast and celebration, all of creation sings for joy. To the God of life and love and freedom, praise and glory forevermore. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of glory, your Son, Jesus Christ, suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy, that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. When we're, able to, <laughs> when we're able to be together again, children's time will look different in that we won't be inviting children to come forward. So uh, we're going to practice that today and see what it might look like. So one of the things that we often use during children's time is this box. And we've said for a long time that sometimes this box has a message from God. And one of the things we're going to do is take a look inside the box and see what that message might be. And as it turns out, I might need your help identifying what that message is. So I'm going to open the box. Oh, and it looks like there's a lot of paper in the box. So, what does this say? Go. Go. All right. Go. What does this say? Share. share. Right? Go, share. Hmm. Another one. Serve. All right. Serve. <laughs> love. love. Go, share, serve, love. We hear those words a lot in church, don't we? We talk about that we're to go 
into the world, that we're to share the good news, that we are to serve God and serve others, and that we're to love God and that we're to love others. And so we have a lot of action verbs, go, share, serve, love. But in just a few minutes, we're going to hear a reading from Acts, and we're going to find out that instead of going and sharing and serving and loving, that Jesus' disciples... wait, and that Jesus' disciples pray. So sometimes as God's people, we're supposed to wait and pray. And those are action words too, but of course we go and we share and we serve and we love, but there are moments that we wait and we pray. And so I pray that we will be able to hear God's voice directing us when it's time to go and share and serve and love, but also that God will remind us that sometimes it's okay to wait and to pray. And right now we're waiting. We're waiting to be back together again. So I encourage you all to keep praying during this time of waiting and to remember that even though we're not together, there are times that we can also go and share and serve and love. So let's pray. Thank you, God, for giving us what we need to go and to share and to serve and to love. We also ask that you will guide us into those places where it is okay to just wait and pray. Amen. A reading from Acts. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord. Let God arise, and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad, and rejoice before God. Let them also be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name, rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom, but the rebels shall live in desert places. O oh God, 
when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness. The earth quaked and the skies poured down rain at the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel. You sent a bountiful rain, O God. You restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You send forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God, whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. A reading from 1 Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's suffering, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are reviled for the name of Christ, you are blessed, because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we're able, we stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. It is the night of Jesus' betrayal. He has taught his disciples that they are to love one another as he first loved them. And then he enters into what is sometimes called his high priestly prayer, where he prays for his followers, especially that they will be one. After Jesus had spoken these words to his disciples, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do, so now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. 
the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. About 10 years ago, Sarah gave me one of the best Christmas gifts ever, a DVD box set featuring every single episode of the 1970s television show Wonder Woman. After receiving the gift, I immediately binge-watched the entire series, and I revisit the show on a regular basis. Now, as an adult, the special effects seem a bit more cheesy and the storyline somewhat more unrealistic, but I still enjoy watching it. The show brings up feelings of nostalgia for me, as it was the first live-action television show I watched as a child. And one of the things I most remember is that it introduced me to a classic TV trope, to be continued. To be continued. What an effective tool this was. It left me wondering what would come next and how it would unfold. We didn't have the luxury of streaming services like Netflix, where all we had to do was select continue watching. Instead, we had to wait and wonder, pause, and imagine what would happen next. And then finally, after a week had passed, we could sit back in front of the television and after a brief recap last week on Wonder Woman, find out how the story would wrap up. To be continued. As a method of storytelling, I love it. In fact, I think we should use it more in the church. At the end of Scripture readings, instead of saying the word of the Lord, the reader ought to say, to be continued. It would work so well, especially since we don't read an entire book of the Bible in one worship service. Instead, those stories get interrupted, and unless we read ahead on our own, we are waiting until the next week to hear the rest. Take, for example, today's story from Acts. It is the day of Jesus' ascension into heaven. And as Jesus prepares to depart, he tells his disciples they will receive the Holy Spirit and be his witnesses. They will share the story of the good news of God's love to all the ends of the earth. And though they initially stare at the heavens with their mouths hanging open, luckily they get another push to get moving. Two men dressed in white show up, and remind them that Jesus will come again the same way they saw him leave. And so what do they do? They go home. It was a short trip back to the city. A Sabbath day journey refers to the distance Jewish people could walk on the Sabbath, which is about a half mile. When they arrive in Jerusalem, they gather in a room. Others are present, including Jesus' mom and brothers. And though they pray, they primarily wait. Not much action happening here to be continued. Of course, they don't have to wait long. As we'll learn next week, the Holy Spirit is poured out upon them, and then to be continued takes on a whole new meaning. With each passing day and week, there is growth and change in this early church. There is conflict and uncertainty. There are persecutions and arrests, epic shipwrecks and passionate speeches, And even hearts and minds are changed as the Holy Spirit invigorates and guides the church. Each story seemingly ends with to be continued as the early church wonders what could possibly happen next. As I said, though, we're going to get to all of that, or at least the story of Pentecost next week. Right now, we're still waiting. And in this time of COVID-19 waiting, it feels to me like every single day is ending with the words, to be continued. Except in this case, instead of waiting with excitement for what is next, we find ourselves waiting with anxiety, uncertainty, and any number of questions. What will tomorrow bring as we hear updated reports? What else might we have to cancel, postpone, or delay? Will there be a more severe second wave that again brings us to a screeching halt? How much more will we and others have to suffer? Which of our neighbors will continue to struggle because of job loss and slowly run out of resources? As we see increases in the sales of alcohol, domestic violence reports, and mental health issues, what tolls will these continue to take on individuals, couples, and families? Are we opening the church up at the right time? All the questions, 
I have all the questions, and I feel frustrated by waiting, frustrated by the endless cycle of to be continued, and I'm not always quite sure what to do with it. When I think back to those first followers of Jesus and how they waited by returning home and devoting themselves to prayer, I even get a bit jealous. When times are uncertain and anxious, I actually find it harder to pray. I find it more difficult, as the writer of 1 Peter says in today's second lesson, to cast all my anxieties onto God. I'm all, no, no, God, I've got this. You just, you just stay over there. And somewhere in heaven, I'm sure Jesus does a divine face palm and rolls his eyes and then finds some way to gently remind stubborn, bullheaded me that I'm not alone in this. And that's the trick of uncertain times and especially moments like this where we are forced to be more isolated. We begin to think we are alone. But in Acts, those first followers of Jesus waited together as a community And even when the message was to be continued, they were together. And I would imagine helping shoulder each other's burdens. And furthermore, 1 Peter wasn't written to an individual. It was written to churches, and especially churches being bullied, mocked, and persecuted for being Christians. The writer not only reminds them of the hope they have in Jesus, but also directly says that Jesus cares for them. It was a reminder that they were knit together as a community. And so maybe, just maybe, casting anxieties onto Jesus isn't about the almost impossible platitude that we should let go and let God. Maybe, just maybe, we cast our anxieties onto Jesus by sharing them with others, listening, with those, listening when those in our community of faith are in need, and helping each other shoulder whatever comes. And friends, I've seen you doing it in this time of separation. You're calling one another, saying hello to each other via the comments section on Facebook when we go live for worship, helping each other with tasks, continuing to prepare hygiene bags and lunches to be handed out to the homeless on Saturday mornings, speaking words of encouragement. You are being the hands and feet of Jesus and helping others know that indeed Jesus cares for them. Thank you for doing this important, vital work during this time when we are apart. But what happens when we are able to come back together? How will the story of ascension continue to unfold? Right now we're hearing to be continued, but what will it look like for us as God's people One piece that stands out for me is the possible timing of all of this. We weren't together for Palm Sunday and the contemplation of Holy Week or the unique and moving services of Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday. We couldn't be here for the joyful celebration of Easter. The church won't be together for the excitement of Pentecost as we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit that God so freely pours upon us. And these big mile markers in the life of the church These are times we are especially accustomed to being together. And now they have come and gone. And when we finally are able to get together, we will be in that long green season known as the time after Pentecost. It is the season altar guilds love because they rarely have to change pyramids. It stretches from late spring into summer and almost all the way through the fall. But... It is during this season that our scripture readings draw our attention to discipleship. We ponder questions like, what does it look like to live as God's people? How might we best follow Jesus and share God's love with the world? In what ways will we, with God's help, grow in our lives of faith? And it seems fitting, doesn't it, to come back together and to turn our focus to how we as God's people at Ascension live as God calls us to live. We'll be together to adjust to doing things in a somewhat new way for the time being. We'll be together to dream and vision what it means to constantly live stream worship. We'll be together to ponder how we can better use technology to reach others. We'll be together to see what new shape mission and ministry will take while also rejoicing that some of our typical ways of being the church will remain the same. We'll be together to support one another and bear each other's burdens. 
What will it look like? I'm not sure. Just like a cliffhanger at the end of Wonder Woman, I guess the best thing to say is to be continued. However, even in uncertainty, we can trust in what will continue. God's abundant grace and love will continue. The gifts God gives us, the words of Scripture, the splash of baptismal waters, and the body and blood of communion will continue. The presence of others reminding us we are never alone will continue. And why will God continue to give us these gifts? Because as the writer of 1 Peter says, God cares for us. God cares for you. God cares for me. God cares for the world. God cares for us. And that care has been, is now, and will be continued. Amen. We are all one in Christ, we are one body, all one people out of many. We are all one in Christ, we are one body, all one people out of many. There is one God and only one Lord, there is one faith, one holy love. There is one baptism, there is one Spirit, who is God the Comforter. We are all one in Christ, we are one body, all one people out of many. We are all one in Christ, we are one body, all one people out of many. There is one God and only one Lord. There is one faith, one holy love. There is one baptism, there is one spirit. Who is God the Comforter? We have been made God's people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. 
O God, call your people to be one as you are one. Unite your church in the truth of your gospel, the love of our neighbor, and the call to proclaim your reign to all people. Lord, in your mercy, breathe life into your creation. Guide your people as we explore the mysteries of the universe. We pray for the work of scientists and mathematicians whose skill enriches our understanding. Lord, in your mercy, make your justice known among the nations of the earth. Protect the vulnerable, especially in nations currently in crisis. We pray for all who suffer as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, locally, nationally, and across the world. Help us to use our knowledge and resources to battle the disease and contend with those who are impacted economically. Lord, in your mercy. Come to the aid of your children. We pray for those engulfed in grief, those without supportive families, and for all who are isolated, powerless, or afraid, that all may rest their anxieties in your care. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those in our community who need prayers of healing. Elaine, Pam, Ron, Hazel, Butch, Al, Mike W, Claudette, Debbie, Mike E, Albert, Nora, Chris, and those we name in silence. We lift up those celebrating baptismal anniversaries, Carl, Wolfgang, Amanda, Kirsten, Julia, Madeline, and Coley, as well as Henry and Lee, who celebrate their wedding anniversary. Lord, in your mercy. Raise all your saints, especially Martha, to eternal life even as we pray for those who deeply grieve, especially Pastor Peter, his family, and St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Until that day, we give you thanks for the faithful examples of those who have listened to your voice and now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy. God of glory, in whose hands are the living and the dead, we give you thanks for all those who have laid down their lives in the service of our country, those we name and honor in silence. Give us a sense of your will and purpose that we may understand that the work you have begun in them will be perfected through the one who has laid down his life for our sake and whom all strife is resolved, Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. with bold confidence in your love, Almighty God, we place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace, friends. Peace. At this point in our service, we pause to take an offering and to worship God by giving sacrificially. And I want you to know that we are so grateful for your ongoing generosity. It really has been overwhelming even this time of isolation to um, not just receive offerings, but to hear stories of what's going on, um, how you're making these decisions, and how you see um, the gospel being lived out where you are through the mission and ministry of Ascension, even while we're in isolation. I wanted to let you know we have had several of our families offer a part, a significant part or a tithe, of stimulus checks for people that don't feel that they need it, um, have chosen to give to charities and to give to churches, including Ascension. And so we are very grateful for those of you that have made that decision, and we invite those of you who are watching to join in that generosity so that we can continue to take this message out into the world.
the grains of wheat once scattered on a hill were gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. The grains of wheat, once scattered on a hill, were gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Let this be a foretaste of all that is to come when all creation shares this feast with you. As the grains of wheat, once scattered on the hills, were gathered into one to become our bread. So may all your people from all the ends of earth be gathered into one in you. Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Feed us again at this table for service in your name, in the strength of the risen Christ. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, the earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who, living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and gave thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life, for all this dying world, breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
As we're able, we stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, you have fed us with your word and our hearts burn within us. Through this meal, you have opened us to your presence. Now send us forth to share the gifts of Easter with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and as we prepare to close our worship service today, I'd like to leave you with a few announcements as we carry this message out into the world. I want to let you know we have made the very difficult decision to move faith camp. Faith camp, for those of you that aren't familiar, is very akin to a day camp. Um, It's a vacation Bible school, but so much more. We are moving this to July 13th to 17th, still at Captain Butler's. Stay, um, stay attuned to announcements as things are so shifting during this season, um, but we do hope to have it July 13th to 17th. If that adjusts your registration, um, please do get a hold of Pastor Todd. Also want to let you know we found out on Friday that Lutheridge, the camp we go to in Asheville, North Carolina, has made the very difficult decision to suspend all camps this summer. Um, Pastor Todd is working with families to get deposits back for that, um, and we will be looking to see how we might be able to support Luther Ridge as they are about to enter into a very difficult financial time. Um, we will let you know more about that as we know more. want to let you know that we are continuing to have Bible study Wednesday at noon um, via Facebook Live. Um, we have a new series starting this Wednesday. It will be Faith Working Through Love. You can expect about 30 minutes of that with me on Wednesdays. And finally, we are continuing our diaper drive to honor moms and dads between Mother's Day and Father's Day. All diapers and wipes support Over the Moon, the first diaper bank here in coastal Georgia. Um, There's much more information about that and links to give in our announcement section. That's all I have for us today. Um, As we're able, we stand and receive God's blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
whose truth is marching on. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea, with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us live to make men free, while God is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. Christ is risen just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news, alleluia.